At Drum and Golf, we understand your passion. Nice roll. And that's because every Drum and Golf store is owned and run by a local who loves the game as much as you do. Yeah, it's come off the face really well. Someone who knows where you play and what you need. Oh yeah, looking good. With Australia's biggest range and expert knowledge. Great. Now let's try that putter with this grip. So if you want to improve your game, see your local expert at Drum and Golf. I've never seen anything like it before, and to attempt to hit the ball out of there is pure madness. The winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer of the year is Cameron Smith. This is the one that I've always wanted to win since I was a little kid, so it just feels pretty amazing to be able to get it done today. Uh, it's amazing that it's my destiny to be the first Aussie to win. Just incredible. Hello and welcome to episode 53 of the Playing From The Tips podcast, Golf Australia Magazine's preview and tipping show that covers the entire world of professional golf, bringing you all you need to know, some things you don't, and some so-called expert tips. My name is Jimmy Emanuel and I'm the host of this global expedition that this week visits Florida, China, Hong Kong, South Africa, and Puerto Rico. Joining us on that journey is a consistent presence who might just be refreshed and ready to launch into a rant after a rare week off from his column writing duties. Rod Morrie, did you miss grumbling about something on a Monday morning? Oh, peek behind the scenes. I won't be doing the column anymore, Jimmy. Oh, really? Yeah. What, is that your, your choice? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. You're Just focusing struggling. on school now. Is that- I'll be honest with you. I've been doing it for about six or seven years <laughs> every week. I've missed about three weeks a year over Christmas. Yep. And I'll be honest with you, I've got about three ideas, as most people know. And, and I reckon I've rung everything that you, about that you possibly as the, can. As, as, the for, as the former sub-editor of your column, <laughs> I can tell you, you only had three <laughs> ideas. You wrote the same column Some, twice, quite a few times. What was, yeah, the one I dished, I sent Jimmy my column one week. And he said, <laughs> mate, I've read this before. And he went back exactly 12 months and said, here's last year's effort. It was like... <laughs> Okay, this is almost word for word. So that's true. And look, I, I hope a- that opens up a space for some others and, you know, those of us who are getting on and need to make a bit of space for others. So, yeah, I've, uh, I've given up the column. Well, I thought you might have. So congratulations it a good on chance. it. Oh, okay. yeah, Very good run. Exactly. That was yeah, some good stuff. To pay tribute and also to (laughs) make fun of you about focusing on school. I think that was all very well done, Loke. You've done a great job (laughs) there. That was exactly what I want. Uh, I think we can say about Rod's column, his good was very good. Yes. Yes. But it wasn't every Absolutely. He even says it about (laughs) himself. Yes. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. exactly. Let's move on. Uh, Next is the voice of a man you've already heard who has yet to rediscover his tipping prowess in 2024. Hey, hey, hey. Steady on. And that's pretty much all he gets by in his Hannah intro. Green, Adrian Luke. <laughs> yeah, I tipped Celine Hannah Boutier, the before, but was all the way there, and then Hannah Green just snatched it from her Ooh, and me. He's sensitive, isn't he? That's, it's a slump. For that's sure. a man under pressure, isn't it? Yeah, that's when you bit, start to bite bitten. back at the external yeah. noise. Says, yeah, yeah. he's, <laughs> you know, uh, like Scotty Sheffield that, with his putting. I'm a fine putter. Yeah, that's, nothing wrong with my yeah, putting. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's let's get a few reflections on last week, and we'll lead off. Hannah Green, I think, apart from Logue, everyone in the country and around the world thought it was really good. <laughs> You're the only Australian cheering for Celine Boutier, the <laughs> selfish Adrian Logue. <laughs> oh, it was a great finish. Three birdies on the trot to finish, and uh, I think a big year maybe for Hannah Green, oh, but we say that I often. Couldn't agree. I thought that last year too, but look, her good is exceptional, and she is just, she's got it. She's a winner. She's not a technical, she doesn't do some of the other physical stuff as well as some of the other players, but if she gets in the frame, she's always a chance, and it was showed again uh, yesterday. She doesn't just win, she wins tight, head-to-head sort of tussles. She's She's a serious player. Good on her. Uh, there was also another first-time winner on the PGA Tour. That's just par for the course every week at the moment. Uh, Can you say his name? Eckroat. Austin. Austin Eckroat. Austin. <laughs> okay. yep. Is it a bad thing? Interesting. Everybody's complaining that the stars no. aren't winning, but is it bad? I'm not so. sure. I think there's, they've all been good stories. None of them have been amazing stories that have you know broken through and gone viral, but every winner of this year has been a good story. Yeah. And I, yeah think, I mean, I think you'll probably Dunlap get a big and name win this week. And- so. Yeah, it's very lot, so many obscure winners. But the, looking at the field this week as well, it's extremely obscure names in there. But, in yeah, the Arnold Palmer, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. bizarre what they've done with also, the, 
the uh, qualification is incredibly it? talented. All of them, like, uh, it's, yeah, of course, there's no enough. Very, nuts. Very, it's a very strong field, and <laughs> they're all going to be, you know, going for a win. Look, here's is, what we forget yeah, as exactly. recreational golfers: there's no nuffies on the PGA no. Tour. <laughs> the no, guys you've no. never heard of, if they turned up at your club, you'd think they were the best golfer you'd ever seen in yeah, your life. Absolutely correct. So, absolutely, the standards are pretty high. Yep. But yeah, I, I'm, this debate's going on about whether you're better off to have a superstar like Woods or this meritocracy idea. Nothing wrong with the meritocracy, and they go in cycles anyway. Oh, so. No, I think so. Uh, Joaquin Neiman was another standout of last week. Veterans at the New Zealand Open. Scott Hen just lipping out a putt to have yeah. a playoff. And the Pro-Am format of the New Zealand Open, I think that's a win mm-hmm. every year. I think we look mm-hmm. at that and it's pretty good, brings attention and stuff. It's not necessarily what a traditionalist would want for a National Open, but it does a very good job of what they need to for that tournament. Uh, They've got it and right, then Anthony they? Kim. Yes, they have. They have got it right. Michael Gladding does a fantastic job with that New Zealand Open. Um, really showcases the, to- the, uh, the courses there yeah. as well. My instinct is that that's a stepping stone, that pro-am, to perhaps getting the New Zealand Open back to a standalone tournament of more prestige, and that will work. This is a great building phase, and you can turn that into something where they won't need to have the pro-am in 10 years' time, and yeah. it'll be back to being the, a prestigious the open, national champion. Open to New Zealand. Open to New Zealand. <laughs> open to New Zealand, of course. Yeah. Uh, and then, Anthony Kim, thoughts from both of you on what that? What do you make of it, like Anthony Kim? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's... It, he's like what I thought say, he was going to be. Yeah. It, it's kind of what we expected, and yeah. It, it, I guess it wasn't as embarrassing as it could have been. No, you can say that he will shot in the seventies all three days, and yeah, yeah. It and bad. it it was a it was the softest of the golf courses. They really will play for a little while. That'll give him an easy run. He did have a cold top and a hosel rocket in the first couple yeah. of holes on the first day, which filled my heart with a bit of joy because it's familiarity. <laughs> he had some of those knee knocking two foot putts though, Jimmy. They must have disturbed you. <laughs> no, I don't watch once they get on the green. I'm done. Uh, with that. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say the quiet part out loud. He looks weird. His face think? and his, he just looks weird. Probably because you haven't seen him for 12 yeah. years and yeah. it hasn't been gradual. That's it's a that real shock to school see. School reunion him. type of shock. Yeah, youthful to <laughs> oh, what yeah. happened to you? It's like you look, yeah. his face is puffy and the, the long hair doesn't work. And yeah. But look, they're always, they're always going to be on a hiding to nothing in some ways, weren't they? Yeah. With, I with think it, it, it did a lot of what it was supposed to, but the time it what frame of it doing in America probably didn't. So. It'll be interesting to see how long the interest lasts. Yeah. Most watched first tee shot in a very – even I turned it on to watch the first tee shot because I was yeah. glad I stuck around for the second, which was a cold top. It got a lot yeah, of attention, exactly. which is job done. Yeah. That, that was what yeah, it was about. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, finally, on last week, we did manage four top tens, not to spe- – pick anyone out, but three of those were mine, and we also had one win. Also, that was mine as well with Joaquin Neiman. Uh, so we're now at five wins and 34 top tens for this year. Uh, on to this week's golf. Uh, and in an attempt to reinvigorate his tipping, we're going to move Adrian Logue up the order, like okay. like a batsman in a cricket side with struggling for runs in a run chase. Up Has it work- comes. hasn't really worked for Steve Smith, has it? No, it hasn't. It, no, but I don't really care if you have success, but that's just you know, a like for like sort of deal. Uh, so, Logue, you're going to take us through the Arnold Palmer Invitational presented by MasterCard. What is this MasterCard, first of all? We, we all know. Don't give me that. We all know who MasterCard <laughs> is. I, I really haven't got a lot to say about the title of this week's event, except once again, it's making a mockery of the Invitational <laughs> moniker. I, you know, I, again, I scoured the internet in hope to see if anybody's posted a photo of their quote-unquote invitation on social media, uh, but I don't think any invitations actually got sent out for the, for the Arnold Palmer invitation. They're probably a digital these days. It's electronic, like the payments. They just go straight in the bank. You just get an email. Uh, yeah, like, like it. the big uh, check is nothing anymore. It obviously doesn't mean a lot to anybody that this is called an invitation. I'll, I'll keep banging this drum, though. They, uh, and don't give me this sponsor's exemption stuff. That's not an Im- that's not an invitation. No, everyone. An, that an is in fact the very definition of an invitation. Yeah, it an is invitation. you haven't qualified, but I'm inviting you to put a regardless. true invitational. Everyone in the field gets an invitation, regardless of how they qualified there. Okay. And it's okay. yeah, they just continue to make a mockery of this invitational thing. Okay, uh, and it's played at the Bay Hill Club and Lodge in Orlando. I don't really have much to say about that either, except it's very green, <laughs> very narrow, very uninteresting. And it's got a lot of water. The last hole's reasonably familiar to us. Um, and when there's that right pin position on day four, it creates a bit of drama. 
Um, I think we can all remember some interesting shots there and some interesting putts hold. And uh, but the highlight for me is really I think it's the fifteenth where they hit her over a hedge. Yep, that's, uh, that's always a highlight. That's one of more the, course designers should build that into their their routings and their, their yeah. thought patterns. More hedges. One of the highlights about, of the PGA Tour season. What about the days of the Turkish Airlines Open where they teed off from the roof, the roof of the hotel roof and, and a hedge? Yeah, how good was that? <laughs> good stuff Nick this little. is a signature event in, in addition to being a so-called invitational it's a signature event <laughs> so small field uh the cut format this week uh is top 50 and ties plus anyone within the 10 shots of the, the old league. masters format. the old masters, masters format the masters. was the master i think it might have been top 60 and ties plus the top plus top plus so anyone within 10 within shots, 10 yeah. shots. Yeah, yeah within top 10. 50 and ties uh, it's only about 80 people in the field, so um, yeah, in, interesting format. Actually, pretty good format. I think they've tweaked this formula to be mm. about as good as it can be at the moment. Kurt Kitayama is the defending champion. Uh, as I said earlier, this is a very good field. Winner from two years ago, Scott Scheffler's in there again and would have to be considered a pretty good chance this week um, if he can putt. I, th- I guess we're going to say that about him for the rest of his career. Uh, in every other metric, he's absolutely dominant. Um, some other notables is Rory's playing again. Rory didn't seem to be that sharp last week, but he always tends to play pretty well here at the API. Uh, and in fact, Kurt Kitayama, I think, just sort of edged him out last year. Uh, Victor Hovland, Xander Schoffley, Patrick Cantlay, Oberg uh, slash Arberg playing as Aubert. well. Aubert. Aubert. Hmm. Uh, Morikawa, Matsuyama. Matsuyama just keeps going under the radar despite... For readers at home, listeners at home, you can follow along with the field list in front of you. As it <laughs> just reads through I'm, it. I've, I've written down some names. <laughs> I've cherry-picked the ve- the best of the best for you here. <laughs> Justin Thomas as well, who's consistently year after year been very good in this event. And I'm skipping over names like Wyndham Clark, Matt Fitzpatrick, yeah, uh, although right. I didn't really skip over them because I just said them. Mm. Um, but <laughs> then... Uh, what what stands out to me though is in this field, and every week I guess now in the PJ Tour is these names like Dunlap and Eckroat and um, Pavon and, and that, who are winning, who you scan down these field lists and you would never have picked them. No, so it's a it's no. a mugs game we're trying to do here. Um, Does it make the PJ Tour's case in some ways with format versus live? You can have these underdogs win. It sort of can't happen on live, or much less likely to happen on live. Is it a good? Uh, that, it is much I less likely so. to happen in live because you know they're, they're kind of handpicked in live, I guess. But also, these they're young and hungry. Well, and here's the thing: their lives next target and vinegar, and yeah. they're all out to <laughs> but like, win also, these tournaments. Their lives next targets. So what live wants is for the PGA Tour to um, create the next stars of the game and then pick them off. That's kind yeah. of what we're looking at. Liv yeah. can't create stars. Yeah. The, the fields no. aren't big enough to create stars. Yeah. If somebody was to win, you know, like and 53 other players, you know. Every time we say and that, it makes the PGA Tour sound like a feeder tour, but it's yeah. still... and there's not enough money they've got on the Asian Tour or anything to attract these young guys to go there instead of the PGA Tour because they're now getting those opportunities in America. So You wonder whether that'll be it, Liv's next target. With talks of the agreement falling apart, whether Liv then just go, basically buys the Asian Tour and says, right, here's your way on to Liv, which would be a... Mm extraordinary game changer in world golf. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, okay. Anything else you're going to uh, tell us about it, Luke? Yeah, else a few, on the few Australians list? in the field. Cam, Cam Davis, Jason Day, Minwoo Lee, who played his way in with a good performance mm. uh, in this past week. He's building, isn't he? He really is. He's building yeah. to something. Um, and and featured Scott, on Australian got... Story this week as well yeah. on the ABC. Oh, was he? Yeah, with Minji. Yeah, he and Minji. Oh, I'll have to have a look yeah. at that. Oh, I'll have to have a look. Um, Adam Scott, who got a sponsor's exemption. Don't tell Again, it's an, it's not invitation. that's going to get very curly very soon because players are starting to say publicly, seriously, yeah. we're going to do this, give player board yeah. members exemptions yeah. into signature events. Webb Simpson, same in. deal. Yep, absolutely. Uh, of that, So that's that's the field. Um, going to, to a pick, um, I like uh, Sam Burns. Um, oh, okay. He's on a very good run of form. Uh, four top tens in his last four starts and quite good strokes gained figures across the board, yeah. which is like Ooh. some of the deep research I do for this. That is podcast. deep research. All right. A verb for a surname doesn't hurt either, does it? Burns. <laughs> Sam <laughs> Burns. Yep. Feel the burns. Yeah. Feel the burns. Yeah, right. <laughs> feel the bur- they'll be Rod? feeling the burns on Sunday. 
Uh, it's as boring as the man himself, but I kind of like Patrick Cantlay. This is really interesting about the Palmer yeah. and a lot of the the Byron Nelson, a few other the real legacy tournaments on the PGA Tour. The reality of what the players have said over the years is they're not actually interested. Pa- Patrick Cantlay has played the Arnold Palmer tournament once. Is that right? Once. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is his second time. McElroy was a long time skipper of the yeah. Arnold Palmer tournament. Now, sometimes that's due to scheduling, but if you're going to make the legacy argument. You need to make sure that those things mm. are kind of in place. So for all the talk and all the reverence of Arnold Palmer, haven't bothered to turn up and play his event. So, but I like Patrick Kelly. He finished fourth here last year as his first start. Yeah. So good play. Uh, playing, playing well, trending in the right direction. I like one of the ones mentioned on Logue's list of Min Woo Lee. Uh, what, the played well last field? Week. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, played well last week. Uh, his housemate, current housemate, was the winner last year, Kurt Kitayama. So maybe he gets a good bit of intel in a practice round um, and just feels like he's getting very, very close to being one of those first-time winners. So uh, I like Min Woo. You know the feeling when your mate's golf ball flies past yours? Or when you're on the green in regulation, but he holds it from the bunker? At Drummond Golf, we get it. That's why we have our lowest price guarantee. As Australia's biggest, you can count on our massive buying power for the lowest prices in golf. But if you do happen to find a lower advertised price, we'll beat it. The Drummond Golf lowest price guarantee. Unbeatable. Conditions apply. Uh, Next, let's move to Asia, where there is actually quite a bit of the action this week. And why don't we go with the LPGA first and Rod Murray's preview of the Blue Bay LPGA. Love a rhyming name. Yeah, yes. love the rhyming name. Um, yeah, played in China. Uh, tournament's been around since 2014. They haven't played since 2018. Now, here's what's interesting. They missed five years. Only three of them are listed because of the pandemic, and they're split. So 2023, they say it was cancelled because of the pandemic, but 2022, it just says no tournament. Don't know what's going on there. Anyway, they haven't played it since 2018. Gabby Lopez won that one. The course is on Hainan Island, which is a really interesting place. You've got 27 courses on this one. It's like the Hawaii of China. Ten of them are at the Mission Hills Resort. Can you mm. imagine a golf entity with ten golf courses on site? Mm. It's just an extraordinary thing to consider, isn't it? Everyone who's been I to was, this. You've been there, have you, Jimmy, to Mission Hills? Uh, no, I was on the way and I had a visa rejection, so I didn't end Ooh, up going. Did you put journalist on your sure occupation? Did. Nah, well, sure that's did. Where you, They're probably lucky you didn't get locked up. That's where you've gone wrong. That's exactly <laughs> I didn't even right. get there. <laughs> <laughs> course has been open since 2012. Um... It's called the Jian Lake Blue Bay course, designed by American firm JMP Golf Design. It's a housing development course. Here's Darius Oliver's description on Planet Golf. Oh. A classic example of a course that's hard for average golfers, but relatively straightforward for the elite player. We've all encountered courses like that, I think. Oh, that's kind of the opposite of what you want. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. So the pictures of it, mate, you know, it's a resort course. It's beautifully maintained. You know, it's got lovely green grass and bright white sand and all of those other things. Let me guess strategically it's got some water. In terms of, there's a bit of water about yeah. and some houses about and that sort of thing. Although Darius might kind of have it wrong in one way. The pros have found it pretty difficult to score here because of the wind. It's the main defense of this golf course. It gets very windy on High Nan Island. Two years out of the five it's been played. 16 and 18 under one. The other three years, two under, eight under, <laughs> single digits under par, which for this level of play is uh, is pretty pretty tough scoring. So the field's going to be the most interesting story this week. 25 Chinese professionals invited to play, and I think this is important, mm. Jimmy. We sort of talked about this before. This is important stuff for those players in that part of the world to tee up in an actual tournament with some of the world's best from the LPGA, really benchmarks their games and helps them for the future produce better and better players because they know what they've got to do. So it's important that it does in that way. It is a limited field, but a bigger field than we've had the last couple. There's only 80 players this week, and there's only 60 in the last couple. Um, Lilia Vu is playing world number one. It's not quite as strong as it has been in past weeks, although I thought that was going to be because of the Aramco series, Jimmy. The purse here is bigger than the last two weeks, but the field's not quite as strong. I thought they'd all be off to the Aramco series, which is being played this week in Tampa, Florida, but they're not. Only Lexi Thompson really is the name player in that Aramco series, so maybe it's just a scheduling thing. Players I think it's a schedule. Right. I think it's, I think it's a scheduling thing. Minji Lee. I think it's a scheduling thing. Plus, there's probably a few players who are still questioning whether they want to go there. So it's probably not helped. To China, you mean, or to Aramco? Yeah, to China. To China, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because of course yeah. it's as controversial as Saudi Arabia in many ways. You've yep. got to talk about human rights and yeah. those kinds of things. So, uh, look, Minji Liz, this is where she won her third LPGA title back in 2016 at Blue Bay. She's shown a liking for the course. She's. Uh, uh, had a tied fourth as well here. Last week's runner-up, Celine Boutier. She's thereabouts every week these days. 
She's a golfer who you'd think, oh, a lot of courses won't suit her because she's a low ball hitter. She doesn't seem to care, Jimmy. No. She just no, performs anyway, even though she technically hasn't gotten the game for this golf course. Yeah. It's also possible, it's been a long time since we've sort of seen her in person, but it's also possible she's hitting the ball higher these days Could and maybe be. changed some physical things about her game because she's really come on in the last couple of years. She's a seriously good player. Um, this is her second appearance here. She was third last time, so she's obviously got some sort of liking for the course. Here's an interesting name for you, Jimmy, one that you don't see very often. Yanni Sang. Oh, no, I saw Yanni Sang. Yeah, yeah. Yanni yeah. Sang. Yeah. Second tournament this year, so mm. perhaps she's staging some sort of a comeback. Some people might not remember, there was a period of about 12 or 18 months where Yanni Sang was the best golfer in the world, male or female, hands down. Yeah. Unquestionable. Yeah, she, yeah. She's bobbed like up the LPGA's in the few events over Anthony the last Kim. couple of years. Yeah, yeah I've seen her occasionally, but she's played, <laughs> already played one this year, so I'm just wondering whether, you know, maybe there's some sort of sort of comeback on there. So she missed a cut in the only other stuff. Anyway, in terms of a, a tip, look, Lydia Co didn't do well for me last week. She played some very substandard golf for her. Uh, I was thinking about backing her again, but it's I'm good. going to switch horses. I don't think Hannah Green's win might just give Min G Lee that little bit of extra yeah, kick along that she needs. At a course where she's played, she's also she's won, but she's also played well when she hasn't won as well. So I think she'll be comfortable this week and maybe another Australian victory. Go Min G. Yeah. Logue. Okay. Uh, who do you think? Do you think Ruining Yin's the top Chinese player this week? Yeah, she would be. Yeah, has to be. Yeah, absolutely. Be, yeah. We don't talk about her. What's it? I know. We Great action. Talk, we just, you Great didn't talk player. about her at didn't all. Mention her at all. I know. Um, I'm as guilty as anybody else. I don't understand why some players just slip under the radar. She's a really good player. Although I don't know if she's done a lot this year. Has she? I haven't. Not a, not a huge amount in early starts, but. But it'll be yeah. interesting to see how she goes this well, week. Hard to, adapt, bit of hard to adapt when you're a young player, unexpectedly win a major. That yep. brings a whole mess yep. of stuff with it that you're not And it can take players a while to recover. Yep. So I'll, anyway, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. I, I'm not backing Ronan Yin. Um, I can, okay. I, I'm going with Lydia Ko since Rod opened up that opportunity. There. Always good to back the person I've tipped the week before. <laughs> Amazing yeah, how I'm, often that gets up. <laughs> and, I, and I'm going to take a very similar approach and go with Celine Boot here because she didn't get up for Logue last week. So there we're just going to... Yeah, no, <laughs> it's really got nothing to do with good. golf. This is just a personal it's competition amongst us. So we are the spite. Jordan Spieth and Patrick yeah. Reed pairing from the row. We're just trying to beat each other. And if we happen to clean up the opposition on the way through, fantastic. <laughs> wait, wait till a couple of tournaments time when someone surely will take you and Ferguson because he's surely going to be. Oh, I'll be talking loads. about him. <laughs> don't you worry. <laughs> uh, we're going to stay right in this region. Live golf goes from Saudi Arabia to Hong Kong, and where else do you play tournament golf? In in apparently what's called the Pearl of Asia, but the Hong Kong Golf Club and its Fanling property. Uh, of course, site of Hong Kong Opens Past and other Asian tour events and other tournaments, all sorts of things. Uh, you never actually can be quite sure when a live event goes to somewhere like this, what course they're going to play because normally the course here is a composite or composite mm. of... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> ten holes from the Eden and ten hole and eight holes from the New at Hong Kong Golf Club, but Live don't really publicise anything about their golf courses apart from the name. What are they um, hiding? So what are they hiding, Jimmy? If you don't invest, who in knows? <laughs> I haven't yet, but I will. Uh, I just think so- they don't. They don't think a lot of it. It's just like a stage which they put their performers on, and it's it's all about yeah, the players and yeah, the true. razzle dazzle and. Yeah. Yeah, who cares about that? And it's up to people like us to delve into Crooked Cat and whatnot. Uh, But (laughs) heavily tree-lined Hong Kong Golf Club, it's a very ball-striking, accurate sort of a deal. Um, It's going to sort of really suit the guys who are position players and really strong iron players. Uh, So look out for that style of golfer. Included in that is Joaquin Neiman, who is obviously Mm -hmm. one of the form players on the planet, but also one of the better ball strikers around. Fairly quiet, top 10 for John Rahm last week. He's worth keeping an eye on, I think, because he's going to be wanting to round into some form. And then it's been a slow start for Cam Smith, who, of course, played very well here last year before heading to the Aussie PGA so he might have some good mojo and vibes, we like good vibes, good mojo Uh, Anthony Kim will get a bit of attention again but it might dissipate but the likes of Brooks Koepka and Dustin Johnson are interesting to watch because they're getting ready to try and win the Masters so they don't have a lot of tournament golf in the lead up, this golf course doesn't have a lot of similarities, so <laughs> it's, it's a hell of a tune up for Augusta National, isn't it? Mm. The Hong, Hong Kong Golf Club. I, I've been to yeah. the Hong Kong I, Golf Club. It, it's I was going to say, I'm sure you have. It's tropical. Yeah. It's uh, tree lined, as they say. It's very like dark and 
Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. Good 18th and, uh, hole they play with the water in yeah. front yeah. down the hill. Really interesting. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Quite, quite entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, with all that in mind, let's get some tips. I'll lead off the batting because I want to tip him first because I tipped him last week. So, Joaquin Neiman again. Yeah. It was uh, tempting to go with Neiman, I must admit. But I went with the player who I think has probably the most similar playing style and I agree about it's going to be accuracy and good iron play this week. So, I went with Abe Answer. Good call. Oh, yeah, nice. Good player. Nice match, yeah. Um, Aussie, eh? Is Joachim Neiman working on the theory that if you just keep winning and complaining about not being in the majors, eventually they'll just invite you to make you quiet? Is that the theory he's yeah. working on? But he's not, he, he I, I saw that line. He wasn't, hasn't that wasn't been, too offensive. Yeah. No, his complaining's been pretty polite. It's like, yeah, I no, can't win majors if I'm not, not playing them. And, no, that's right. Yeah. He was just trying and to And he went around, think, you know. And he, he came here and played, trying to get world ranking points. He went and played the Chilean Open and tried to get world ranking points. I don't even know if they have world ranking points at the Chilean Open, but... The uh, Open de Chile. <laughs> Open de Chile. I uh, apologize. It, it is right. to his Rod eternal tip. credit that, that he's making that effort, Neiman, by the way. You give yes. him full yep. marks for, for the schedule that he's undertaken to try and do it. I'm going to go with John Rahm because he's a bit like when Cam Smith signed with Liv. He's, until he wins that first one, he's kind of... Hasn't sort of sealed the deal, so to speak, and mm-hmm. I, he, he's the sort of player he could bludgeon this course into. It could all go wrong he too, but could, he yeah. could bludgeon this yeah. course into submission. He's that kind of player, and if he's in that sort of frame of mind, yeah. So I'll go with Ram. He's going to do it at some point. Yep. All right. All right. Let's go to now South Africa, where I actually find myself beaming into this episode. But unfortunately, this week I'm not at the Johnson Workwear Open, so I'm going to turn it over to Rod Murray to give us the lowdown. The Johnson work Johnson with a double S J O N double S O N. Now the clues in the title: they're a workwear company mm. based in South mm. Africa. But well, I suspect they've got a global more. market. Well, I don't really know a whole Is lot it like because high vis stuff. Or? Well, you very quickly just get into the catalog, which I wasn't all that interested in. I was looking okay. for the history of the company. I couldn't find a whole lot, and then did time you, got short. Did you by chance are. see? Did you by chance see the man I saw in Johannesburg Airport day wearing jeans, but with those high vis strips around the mid calf? Because I was, I've never seen that before. Is yeah, that a Johnson a Workwear look. product? Could be. Yeah. That's bold, isn't Tell it? me about that it. That is bold. That's a flex. You're going to walk around with that yeah. stuff on your legs. Um, yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, Workwear. Uh, obviously a big deal and a very successful global company because they've got enough money to sponsor a tournament. This is co-sanctioned with the Sunshine Tour. It was a Challenge Tour event in 2022. became a Euro Tour event last year. Played at the Glendower Golf Club. It's the original art. <laughs> this is kind of sad. The original architect at Glendower was Charles Allison of Allison Colt fame, or Colt oh. Allison, whichever way you prefer yeah. There's almost nothing left of that golf course. You would think from the 1920s and sort of 30s, it's been redone, 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 and redone, including they proudly boast on their website about, I think it was 2007, adding a bunch of water features. Hmm. So, what, are they, what does Clates always say about architecture in South Africa? That's like, it's like what Australia would have been if, if Mackenzie, Mackenzie hadn't, hadn't come, come here. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. It's, uh, they it's never had any anything good to, to, to gauge or to, yeah. to learn from, yeah. Uh, look, it's previously hosted the South African Open plenty of times. There was a run of about 10 years where it was the host of South, the yeah, South African yeah. Open. So it's – that's right. So it's a, look, it's a well-known, prestigious course in South Africa. I'm not sure as a golf course there's anything particularly uh, fabulous about it. Really interesting. The last two – what have you got there? Oh, are you down with the Johnson Workwear logo? This is, this is how a logue's brain works. He goes straight away looking not for Johnson Workwear information but for their logo. It's terrible. What's their visual? It's terrible. It's and like down. all unimaginative companies, that like they've scored themselves their big their, their golf golf tournament sponsorship. What do they do? They just shove their logo next to a golf so logo. A golfer. Like they shove them together. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Good effort. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Says the guy who just read an entry list for <laughs> yeah, his players to watch. Right. Hang on, yeah. hang on. Thumbs down, Johnson. <laughs> I cherry picked the the best of the best yes. from a very yeah. good oh, field. Cool. Okay, okay, that's, okay. That's what I do for you. Um, the last two events they played here, Challenge Tour and Euro Tour, the last couple of years, the scoring's been crazy. Twenty four and twenty six under par for a former South African Open venue. I found that quite surprising. So clearly, the way they've set it up must contribute to that in some way. Don't well, know, there's a new T on. There's a new T on one of the holes for this week that was a drivable par four last year and is somehow now a par five this year. I can't remember the whole number off the top of my head, but how do you well, do that? I'm well, you've got to join two holes together, don't you? You can't do that with just one hole. 
you Turkish Airlines <laughs> open stuff. It's on the roof somewhere. I don't I don't understand. But anyway. A lot of boldness this week. Maybe you have to double back or something like yeah. that. Can, <laughs> oh, can you loop the loop? <laughs> yeah. Just to double back the on you, the second shot. The U turn hole. Is that the <laughs> yeah, with the local there. rule you can't hit it over the trees. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, Field's got a lot of South African players as last week. This Sunshine Tour, European Tour, co sanction swing always throws up some interesting local names. And again, like the Chinese players at the Blue Bay or PGA, there's a great opportunity for these players to really measure themselves mm. against um, some of the better players in the world, see what it takes to get the game to that level. It's not a particularly strong European field. Regulars like Richie Ramsey, Adriano, Oliver Wilson, Tom McKibben, that's kind of the level of player we're talking about. Uh, they're the recognisable names. In terms of a tip, though, I'm going to go with an unknown. Well, at least to me, he was unknown previously. He's the defending champion, Nick Backham, I think it would be pronounced. B-A-C-H-E-M from Germany. Backham, Basham. Okay. Bold. Backham. Um, yeah, won here last year and was fourth last week. So playing well at a course that he likes. Why not? Okay. All right, Logue, give us your tip Firstly, and then yeah. your rant on you and Ferguson. Well, first, can I confirm? I did pick him last week. You I? certainly did. Why boldly. did you let me do that? Certainly you did. did it so confidently <laughs> that I was convinced you were right. Why did you let me do that? I, I thought we're friends. You, please, stop me if I pick you and Ferguson again. He's going to play it's, in Australia one day. Yeah, you're going to accidentally come across him. He's going to he punch you in the so hard. He's yeah. a really nice guy, too. Yeah, of course like, he is. <laughs> it's just, he's got to time his performances a little bit better to my liking. But anyway, I, this week... Okay. I don't choose Ewan Ferguson. He's back in the punishment zone. And uh, instead I choose uh, a Northern Irishman who grew up playing Hollywood Golf Club. I speak not of Rory McIlroy, but mm. the aforementioned uh, Tom McKibben, um, who's actually had some good finishes. Yeah, like four, good four top yeah. 20s in his last four starts. Uh, again, yeah, I'm doing good play. research here. So, yeah, Tom McKibben. Yeah, nice. I'm sticking with Connor Syme, who last week I think finished eighth. So it feels like he's he just hasn't won, and he just has to win eventually. And also, he's really good friends with you and Ferguson, so it kind of is a good <laughs> upset. Logan, okay, okay. they'll be sitting around reading some of your stuff and listening to your stuff, Logan, just just tearing shreds off yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, all right. Finally, the PGA Tour actually plays twice this week uh, with the Puerto Rico Open or Open de Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Hmm. Yeah, uh, up against the signature Arnold Palmer Invitational held at Grand Reserve Golf Club, which is apparently, according to its website, where champions play and families never get bored. So there you oh, go. That's a big call. That, can they substantiate a, that? That's a big that's call. A very, They've very workshopped that. Thing to They've had that, a whole offsite. Can, the, the management team got together for an offsite. Went to Hawaii or something. Can I for tell you the most they, exciting They had a whiteboard. They did, it, they did their BHAG. <laughs> they did some SWOT analysis. It's a B. I got that's their big got, hairy audacious goal, and they did some SWOT analysis. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then my favourite part about it is, and families never get bored is yep. in parentheses. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, plus, it, like, that would have come out of their SWOT it, analysis. They yeah, thought correct. Like you know, families are important written, to us, but champions are more yeah. important. So we someone's need to, written it need on to the visibly show that hierarchy. And then they're going through it going, I don't know, it just could use something else. And some guy's going up and put a couple of lines around and families never get bored and they've all gone, oh, yeah, pay rise. Mm. So It's, it's like good. they're saying the quiet part out loud. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Ch- champions are what we're about yeah. and families are also yeah. important. Yeah, correct. Clearly. Behind uh, every great champion is a family. <laughs> correct. <laughs> all right. Uh, so this, is, <laughs> this has become a fixture for the PGA Tour. Tom Kite designed golf course. Actually has some interest. It sort of goes along the beach and through a bit of rainforest, a bit of water. Um, but this sort of used to hold a late in the year spot on the on the schedule and used to get a couple like Victor Hovland went there and won in 2020. But all of those guys are going to be in Florida. Um, there's also some interesting names on the honor roll. This is my research for this event because there's not much in terms of this year's field. So I just went, let's go back. Charlie Sifford, George Knudsen, Chick Harbert, and uh, Bob Toski all won the Port Nice. Some great names. That is some great names. Yeah. And that? better names yeah. than we have today too. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Austin Eckroat's got to be in the running, doesn't it? And Austin Greaser. I did, like that. It, did Dow Finsterwald ever Dow claim a- Dow Finsterwald. No, Rick but Ed Porky Oliver was a runner. Oh, <laughs> good on you, Porky. <laughs> Go and, art, and Art Wall also had a Art couple Wall. of close calls in Puerto Rico. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, there you Thank go. You um, there is research, like, Jimmy. Well done. Thank you. There is some st- some sort of standouts in the field this year. It's Daniel Berger keeps his go back, uh, return from injury and stuff coming. Uh, Joel Damon, Rasmus Hoygaard, but that's the kind of level you're looking at in terms of the oh, standouts. There's a Hoygaard. Hmm. Oh, there's a Hoygaard. Who Rod's going to pick. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Um, uh, decent Aussie representation too. Jeff Ogilvie, Harrison Endicott, Greg Chalmers and Aaron Badley. Uh, at one stage, Cam Percy was in the field, but then he was told he was out because of an error, but I don't think he was ever in. So that's interesting. Um, so let's get some tips of everyone in Puerto Rico. Let's go with Rod and tell us why you're picking Rasmus Hoygaard this week. Well, I've done some research, and so I'm not picking Rasmus Hoygaard mm. like you blokes. I've got into the research caper because it seems to be uh, the thing to do with this sort of stuff. I tell you, I'm going. You know, you wouldn't pick this if I gave you 156 names, which I am. You wouldn't get the one that I'm going to pick to win, which is Nate Lashley. Okay, would oh, you have ever picked that? Nice. No, I mean, yeah, he's a quality. He's a winner on the PJ Tour. Isn't Played he? here three times, three top ten finishes, and. Interestingly, has boldly missed five of the six cuts that he's played <laughs> this year. Sorry, okay. And yet finished tied third in the one cut that he did make. Okay. <laughs> so it's a big call. So when but, the coin flips heads five times, you'll go on tails. Yeah. If if families never get bored, Lashley never misses the cut. That's what that's what Puerto Rico's about. So go Nate Lashley. Nice. Go Nate. <laughs> Again, good Lashley. Oh, it's not quite a verb for a surname, but Oh, it's close. It invokes it's close. a feeling. It's close, yeah. yeah. Almost, it's almost an amount of pay. Lashley, Lashley. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Enough. Low Next. tip. <laughs> uh, I'm going with Ben Silverman. All I know about him is that he's Canadian, uh, that he's had a few top 20s this season, and he's positive. Unlike almost the entire field, he's positive on all strokes gained metrics. Uh, also, on the negative side, he's 36. <laughs> And this would be his first career win. So it makes it all very unlikely, but... Well, it would fit nicely with the theme of the, the winners from the rest of this year in many yeah. ways. Yeah. There you yeah, go. Good, ben Silverman. Going, yeah, go yeah. Ben. Uh, uh, just yeah. quietly, Aaron Badley was doing quite well on all the strokes gained metrics as well, which... Uh, You've really uh, gone into a strokes gained rabbit hole this week. I'm liking it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm going to go with Harrison Endicott. Don't know what his strokes gained yeah. look like, but he's kind of like a mini Aaron Badley at times and, you know... He feels like he's playing pretty good golf, so let's go with him. Yeah. Uh, there is one other event on where I will be this week, which is the BMW Golf Cup World Final at Fancourt, where the uh, amateurs win world, win national finals and then they go and compete for the world final. So if that's your sort of thing, keep an eye out for that. Fancourt Resort, good place apparently, so I'm headed down there. It's like the um, it's like the golf riders, Jimmy, which Bob Shearer once famously quoted as, "You don't know pressure till you've got to bogey the last four to win the ro- the golf riders." <laughs> <laughs> That'll be what you get at the BMW event too, I think. Gary Player ranks right. uh, Fancourt as one of the top ten courses in the world, doesn't he? Well, there's three courses at Fancourt. Gary de- designed one, but two of the three I think are in the top three in South Africa, apparently, oh, according go. to a rating. Are, the, so are, are one of them? Is one of them his? Oh, is this the yeah. third that's not in the top ten? So no, his is, called, 10? his is the Lynx at Fancourt, right, which okay, used yeah. to be on the Tiger Woods video games and all that sort of stuff. It's Louis Oosthuizen country, Mossel Bay. Okay. So there you go. Uh, anyway, that will do us for episode 52, I think I said, or 53. Three, I think. I can't remember. 53 of playing from the tips. Uh, Rod, I've got a good feeling about your tipping this week. Uh, with with your, no more column constraints, mm. Mm. I think Precious you're going to become a tipping mi- a master. Yeah, he seemed uh, more present thank you for your time. this week for some reason. He did. He, see, he yeah. seemed up and about. Yeah, I yeah. liked it. We got it was good. we got the best with the best of Rod this week. Yeah, Re- uh, low, cherish I- it. <laughs> it doesn't happen often. <laughs> uh, Logan, I kind of hope you actually have a good week tipping this week because I believe we don't oh. have you next week, so then we don't have to have to listen to you gloating. That's right. I mean, well, okay. But this is the part of the season, like I, you know, my incredible record stands despite me missing many weeks, and this is where that starts this year. So scheduling so important, isn't it, Jimmy? And it's individual for every player. You know, some players like to it play is. a lot, some players like to mix it. Logue's I, I just found play his rhythm, signature events, yeah. and yeah, the the elite yeah. Yeah. invitations. Well, if you climb and down and start it, playing with the choppers, you start chopping it. That's what happens. So stick with the big exactly. stuff, mate. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Exactly. And if any listeners find themselves in Oslo over the next couple of weeks, I think you might see Low <laughs> amongst many other localities around the world. Quite the uh, you can, 
Yes, you can of course keep up to date with everything happening in these events on the Golf Australia magazine website where you'll also find tremendous course content like the top 100 courses in Australia for 2024, there's equipment, instruction and our sibling podcast, The Thing About Golf, all at golfaustralia.com.au. Thank you for listening and we will be back next week on Playing From The Tips.